Well, hello everybody. This is an unexpected treat for us all, I'm sure. Welcome to this short tutorial about um, creating decoupage on napkins and tissue paper. I don't know how I got roped into this, but I did, so here we go. Uh, there's two substrates that are ideal for decoupage. One is your everyday napkin. These ones are from Sainsbury's. They're 33 centimeters by 33 and they're two ply, uh, which means obviously that they have two layers. These ones have a plain area in the center and a sort of dimpled border. Don't know whether you can pick that up on the camera or not. That's the one type. I've also got another type, which is um, the bottom of the range cheap ones. These ones are actually from Tesco and those are single ply. So they have just one single layer and, and they're actually dimpled all over. Both types are suitable. You just get different, slightly different effects. And the third method is on tissue paper. Now this is a, it's actually quite a large sheet of tissue paper. It, it's the sort of paper that they use for packaging and gift wrapping. You'd wrap things inside a, a box and it is, let me show you, because I'll cut that off because I'll make it easier. There we go. It is uh, white tissue paper, size 450 by 700 millimeters, and 18 grams per square meter. So it's 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 quite thin, um, but it's perfect for this job. I, I use that because it it is much cheaper to buy than crafting tissue paper. Uh, that that size and weight you get. Uh, I think it's 480 sheets, and it's around about eight pounds for the entire lot. Uh, so we've taken one one completely large sheet and folded it in half and then half again, which comes out just slightly larger than A3. So to, to print on these, what we need to do is attach it to a piece of copier paper, uh, which is what we shall do next. I've got some uh, copy of paper here. This is just normal. This is actually 90 grams per square meter. So it's a bit better quality uh, copy of paper. Actually, is that copy of paper? That might be card, actually. Just bear with me and I'll get some copy of paper. More like it. That's 90 grams a square meter uh, HP copy of paper. So what we need to do is cut the tissue paper to slightly less than A4. And I say slightly less and the reason will become obvious as we go on. So what I've got is somewhere I've got an A4 size piece of uh, construction acetate, as they call it. It's, it's quite thick acetate, but, but it is A4, so it's a good guide. So what I'm going to do is to place that on top of the tissue paper, just slightly over that side and that side initially. Uh, and then I'm just going to use a rotary cutter to trim that off. Move it to there, so it's probably on the screen-ish. Just going to place the ruler just by the side of the acetate. Don't particularly want to cut the acetate, but just by the side, and, and then trim that off. Oops, got a wobbly line there. There we go. And along the bottom. Now, because we've folded that, we've got um, 
some fold lines that we also need to just remove. So I'm going to just put it again, just to the inside of those lines and trim them off. Is anybody paying attention? Is there anybody yeah. out there? Flo, Shaz, Hilda, Deborah, Donna, Debbie, y'all say hi. Hi everyone. I think there's some other people, but they're not speaking to us. That's not unusual. So what are you doing now then? I'm just trimming the paper to size. Uh, so if you put that acetate sheet on the top, you'll see that it's the paper that I've cut is just smaller than the A4 template. So that's now given me, uh, out of one large sheet, four sheets of tissue paper. So what I'm going to do is just take the one Put the others to one side for now and give me a copy of paper back. Place that down, place that on top. Again, you can see that hopefully you can see on camera that the tissue paper is slightly smaller than the copy of paper. Now, the reason that I've done that is I'm going to take some masking tape. Um, Helen Adams says hi. Hi, Helen Adams. It's a new name, I think. I I'm not sure we've seen you before, but welcome. Unfortunately, you've chosen me as your first one. <laughs> and anybody that's seen mine before, I'm like what I like to class as a, a, a functioning antisocial. <laughs> I'm, I can be quite polite and charming for about an hour, and after that, I get right grumpy. So we'll try and make it quicker than that, shall we? So I'm using some masking tape. You could use any tape for this. But I found masking tape has that, that sort of roughness and texture, which if you feed it into a printer, I find helps with the uh, the feeding of the paper. If you use sellotape, it can be a bit shiny and sometimes the wheels inside the printer don't, don't pick it up cleanly. So that's why I'm using masking tape. Now, I tore a piece off and I tore it off slightly wider than the, the A4 paper. And then if I put that down on the top edge, push it down and this is the reason I made the tissue paper slightly smaller than the copy of paper because if I now pick that up it picks up the paper and the tissue if I was to make the tissue the same size all it would do is pick the tissue up but it's picked up both together which makes it easier to turn over give it a little rub to smooth it down and then just fold that tape over in a nice straight edge Flora fell, mate says hi from Nova Scotia. Wow. I don't think we've ever had anybody from Nova Scotia. Hiya, Flora. We live uh, quite close to Old Scotia. <laughs> yeah, we do. About a quarter of a mile from Scotland. So I've, I've made that tape. I tore it off slightly wider than the A4 um, because I wanted to make sure that it was a complete coverage on that edge because I'll use that edge to feed into the printer on the other end, it isn't quite so critical because the trailing edge, we'll call that. I'll use the rotary cutter just to trim the edges. Obviously, you could use scissors as well. So what we have there now is a, some tissue paper attached to a nice flat. I don't know whether you can see there's not many wrinkles going on. Well, not on the paper, perhaps on me. I'm just going to take another piece. This can be slightly smaller than all the way across, just to save on the trimming. And push it down on the end, flatten it down. Because the paper is slightly smaller, when you pick it up, it'll pick up both together. So you're not fighting anything. Smooth it down. Roll the edge to the back. And there we go. That would now be ready to go into uh, a printer. We'll do the same with a piece of tissue paper. I'm not actually going to be going away to print this because the printer's in another room uh, and you'd miss me, I'm sure. <laughs> I'd have to do a dance or something. You'd have to do a dance, yes. Maybe we'll get uh, Fiona to come along and, uh, and do Dance of the Seven Veils or something <laughs> just, to, just to fill in the time. <laughs> 
It's a good way to lose viewers and subscribers, I feel. Oh no. Uh, we'll use the. Uh, which one should we use? We'll use the. Tissue uh, one, the one that's Yeah, we'll use the the one with the, the the blank area, as it were, as opposed to the the dotted edge. And we'll try and use as much of that as possible. Now, you could iron this. Obviously, you can see the, the fold lines. Um, when we smoothed it out, they're not really noticeable. But if, if you find that it is getting in the way, then you can iron them and get rid of some of that. And of course, by careful placing of the paper, you can avoid them if you the things that you're going to the images that you're going to print are smaller then you can move them around and avoid that area anyway that's like the image of me doing the dance on the seven veils is she yeah excellent <laughs> she's obviously not very well ago <laughs> obviously not she's obviously got to uh, lock in stir crazy <laughs> yeah. what i'm going to do is i could in theory of course just go to the edge there and use that part of the tissue um, but because of the uh, dimpled edge I'm going to try and use as much of the flat piece as possible. You'll find when you come to decoupage it the dimples actually don't matter because they disappear anyway they just flatten back out. I nearly said something funny there in fact I've got to say if you put your tissues in the laundry basket they'll get done with the rest of the ironing. <laughs> 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 Um, that, that is funny. If you realise how much ironing steamer actually does, then you'd realise how funny that actually is. So what I'm going to do on this occasion is just fold that top edge over on the edge of the paper. And just uh, fasten that down onto the, the back. It's just a different way of fastening it on. You, you could fasten it in the same way as the other. Um, and we'll do the same that edge. Both methods work and uh, the first method where you wrap the tape round the edge is probably slightly better for feeding um, but as I say I'm not actually going to be printing out on this so I'll give you the choice of ways and you'll find whichever works best for your printer because every printer works slightly differently. So that's that gone to there we could fold those in if we wanted, or we could just uh, nip them off. Get the ruler back, chop them off. It doesn't matter if you uh, just cut some of the paper off, it's not really going to make much difference. There we go. So that's one with the uh, tissue on, uh, the napkin on, uh, and that's the one with the tissue paper. You can probably see the difference in the textures. That one's nice and smooth, slightly shiny, and that one's obviously got the uh, fold marks from the napkin. But both will work well. Now, the next stage, obviously, is you would select your, your images that you're going to use. Now the only thing I'd say with images really is you want to try and get a nice crisp image or a faded one but, but with a white background because when you print it out when, when you tear around or cut round the image to decoupage it on if, it, if there's any colour in that bit it will show up it won't disappear if it's white it'll just blend into the background and you won't see it so if you've got any images and even if it's got a slight off white or a slight gray then it will show up so the best ones are images with a white background or if you used to um, adobe photoshop you can go in and remove the background uh, or another way is to get um, images in the png in the format and png is the format they use for websites so when you put an image on a website it, it ends up as just the image with no border around it. If you've ever tried to put an um, image on a website and you've used something like a JPEG, you get awfully frustrated because you end up with the border around that you can't get rid of. 
So they use a format called PNG. Uh, and basically they're images with no background whatsoever. So they're perfect for the job. The only uh, issue with them is they can come rather small because they are really just used for websites. Uh, and after, if you enlarge it too big, then it starts pixelating and getting a bit fluffy. <clears throat> now the images we've chosen, I think there's a... Um, I just say before you say that, yeah. Natalie's just joined and she had the shock of her life. She thought I'd shaved my head. <laughs> <laughs> it's rather worrying that that's the only, <laughs> yeah. the only difference. Like a before and after photograph and the only thing you can say is, oh, she's shaved her head. <laughs> I don't know whether to be... <laughs> I don't know whether to take that as a compliment or an insult. I'll leave that one up to you. So anyway, we've got the images. The images that we're going to use uh, later on, um, we've put on the uh, Junk Journal group on Facebook, which is basically three images of birds. Um, I've pre-printed some images, and they come from the Graphics Fairy. <coughs> Excuse me, which is a website that uses uh, does um, copyright-free images. If you go to the Graphics Fairy, uh, there's certain images you can download or you can subscribe and download every single thing. Uh, so let me get those and show you where we're at. Right. Yeah. I've printed out some images on, uh, I've used a laser and an inkjet so we can see the differences between the two. Now, with your printer, they all work in different ways. The, the, the best way is if you've got a printer that it feeds it straight through, goes from in there, straight through, stays the same way up and comes out the back. Our uh, laser printer has a, a manual feed that does that. You can put the paper in and it basically just goes straight through like that. Doesn't, no turning over, no twisting, no turning. <clears throat> We have an inkjet uh, that goes, if the paper was in there, it would go in, get turned over, and would print on the back side. Now, obviously, when you, you, this is only tissue and napkin, so any additional turning can create some issues. Um, but if that's how your printer works, it will still work. Uh, we've also got a, a larger A3 printer that feeds from the back. <clears throat> it stands in the back and then just feeds just through again in a relatively straight line. Now, this image <clears throat> is one of the birds and one, both both these images are from the graphics fairy, is, is an image of a uh, postcard, French postcard. Now that is done on the laser printer on tissue. Now you may be able to see the odd wrinkle some slight wrinkling here um by and large it's it's a quite a nice flat image the colors are quite vibrant and if we were to compare that with the inkjet one the put them side by side the colors aren't quite as vibrant uh and because it's inkjet and the way inkjets work, you can get some of this uh, sort of, I don't know whether you can catch it on the camera, some sort of black spotting. Now, the way the laser works is it puts an ele electrostatic charge onto the paper and then picks up the toner, which is a dry powder, and then it's heat set on there. Because if you ever feel a laser paper when it comes out, it's quite warm. And that's because it's heat, heat set that toner onto that paper, which means it comes out instantly dry. Uh, it won't bleed, won't run, and it's much more vibrant. On the inkjet, it does what it says. It sprays ink. It sprays the image onto the paper, so it's wet ink going onto the paper. And if, if your paper isn't perfectly flat, which it won't be because we've attached it to the copy paper, you can get the bits where it's picked up ink uh, and 
I'll show you later on. And sometimes if the paper can just turn over as it gets fed in, you can get a black mark where it's flipped ink off. But anyway, that's that's tissue paper on a laser and an inkjet. Uh, both are more than acceptable for using for decoupaging. Uh, these are... Yeah, they're both tissue paper. These are a slightly different image. Uh, again, from the Graphics Fairy. Uh, that one is a laser napkin uh, with the envelope of the bird and some sort of French script. Again, you can just see at the bottom, perhaps, if you get the right light, where it's just wrinkled slightly as it's gone through. Um, but the the fold line has, has all but disappeared, really. This is the same image on the inkjet. You'll see there's a discrepancy in the colour. That's interpreted it slightly bluer than that one. Uh, again, as you can see there, there's some black marks at the top. And that's because that corner just lifted as it fed in which then splattered a little bit of ink in there because we're probably going to tear that out or cut it out it's not going to we, we can still use it but it's something to be aware of that the inkjet can splatter slightly and because it's wet really you need to leave it or heat set it with a heat gun or leave it till the next day to fully dry otherwise it can bleed when you wet it um as you can see the on the script that script on the laser is much sharper than it is on there but again both are usable the the last one is the same image again <clears throat> uh, which i've done on the same inkjet as that one but that's the single ply uh, you can see the dots perhaps when it's uh, they've embossed into it um, but again it's worked out perfectly well again that corner just bent you can just see the crease there and it flicked some black ink onto there but again because we're going to cut it out or tear it out it's perfectly acceptable uh, the cheap ones as i say have got this embossing all the way over them but when you decoupage that it will disappear so that's covered touching the paper the image and printing it uh, so once you've got your <coughs> your images, I'll show you using a decoupage with the tissue paper because it's not something you might not have come across before. Um, you, we would you would normally get the decoupage on a on a napkin. Now everybody knows how a laser printer works. Do they? That's good. Yeah. See, you live in Larn, as they say, around this part of the woods. Uh, there's two of the images that uh, Fiona will be using in the basic junk journal uh, tomorrow at 2 p.m. UK time. Uh, the third one I've already cut out and decoupaged that onto a piece of paper uh, so it can dry uh, for later. But I'll show you it anyway because that's the third image uh, that we've already decoupaged onto some coffee stained paper. Uh, as you can see, it's lovely and flat. I'll probably run some light sandpaper over that just to blend it slightly more into the paper. But that's what you should do next. Uh, We've cut out that bird. Again, it was printed on tissue paper. I printed all three on one sheet. That's what it would look like when it comes out of the machine. You can just cut that off. Uh, and that's what it looks like when you cut round it, removing all the white. If you were putting it on white, you'd be all right, wouldn't you? Yeah. <clears throat> it on a Excuse white me. sheet of paper. If uh, the paper that we were going to decoupage on was white like that, it's always best to probably decoupage onto a white background. Even if you're just using some gesso under it, just to whiten it up so 
you can actually see the colours. If you don't do it on white, generally the colours aren't so vibrant. I mean, maybe that's what you want. Horses for courses. Um, Can I just say, Flo thinks that we should all have T-shirts saying, I learnt it from Mr Fix-It. <laughs> <laughs> the similar T-shirts already on sale. <laughs> they say something very similar, I'm sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, anyway, where were we? Yes, I've cut round that because we're going to be decoupaging that onto coffee-stained paper. So any white would show up. Um, you can lessen that effect with the coffee stain paper that we'll show you. I'll show you on that one, even though there isn't actually any white on it. I'll show you it later. So to put that onto the coffee stain paper, first of all, we need some coffee stain paper. That's a piece of coffee stain paper. It's not particularly dark, but you can probably just see the stain in if I hold it right to the right. It's the yeah. Uh, certainly, if you could see it next to that, you can see that it's definitely off white. So, what we're going to do is going to use a, a poly pocket. Now, a poly pocket, as I'm sure you're aware, is a, a document holder. Normally, it comes as a, a pocket with a white strip down the side with the holes in that you put into a ring bound folder. I remove the white strip, split it into two pieces. There's the other bit. Uh, and I'm going to use that to actually transfer the image onto the coffee stain paper. You could decoupage it straight on. I just find this method works best for me. And me. And me. Fiona says, and me. So what we're going to do is put the image down, flat down, on the poly pocket. I'm going to get a paintbrush. Uh, that's just got purely got water it's just water and i'm just going to put a big blob of water right in the middle image side, down. image side down and just drag that out to the edge uh, and soak that by pre-wetting your images it, it it gets rid of any sort of stretch and wrinkles the tissue paper you'll find actually wrinkles and stretches much less than the napkins. Um, but again, you can do exactly the same with the, the image on the napkin. That's it. Make sure there's plenty of water on there, and you, you can see the. You'll be able to see. Oh, you can't. I'll risk lifting it up. You can see that, particularly in that area there, that it's sort of bubbled up. And that's because it hasn't been flattened down yet. So we have plenty of water. Stretch it out with a gentle touch, which with my big pludgy fingers isn't the easiest thing to do. So you give it all the soaking, really? All the soaking. You need lots and lots of soaking. Gently teasing it out with a brush, is that right? Yep, I'm teasing it out from the centre to the edges, anywhere where I see that it's it's not absolutely flat. I'll just tease it out some more, but make sure that there's plenty of water on there because you don't want to start lifting it up. I think that's about it. Just a bit there. That's it. That's it. I think that's pretty much it. Now that's got plenty of water on. It, I do believe, is nice and flat on the poly pocket. I don't want to overwork it because that way leaves disaster. But I do want to make sure that it's flat. So that's now perfectly flat on there. So the next thing I'm going to do is take my coffee stained paper, uh, get some, uh, this is Mod Podge Matte, but it's really watered down, probably 50-50. It's nearer water than than anything else. You can see that it it's just running off the brush. I'm going to pick up some of that. I'm going to paint an area on my coffee team paper, roughly equivalent to that uh, size. 
just a, a relatively thin layer we don't want it soaking but we do want enough that it's going to just grab it slightly Maureen's joined us hi Maureen good afternoon good morning wherever you are she's gone to Zazzle gone to Zazzle yeah. that way you lead disaster it's a bit like going to the graphics fairy you'll be lost in there for days yeah but the graphics fairy is free if the graphics fairy is free you'll be lost for free so what I've done is put a very thin little coat on there barely wetted it it's not soaking and I'm going to pick up my image which is now firmly attached to that turn it over and then we've got the image and then we can see through the poly pocket exactly where we're going to place it so we're going to drop the bottom end and then just lower it down gently onto the paper uh, and as you can see now because it's on the poly pocket and we have put the stuff down you can actually lift it back up and reposition if you're quick enough on this occasion i think because it isn't actually going anywhere in particular we'll be fine and then what we're going to do is just rub over the image make sure it's nice and flat just a reasonable amount of pressure but not too much just make sure there's no air bubbles no excessive liquid got under there as you can see that's now quite flat uh, and then what i'm going to do is just pick up the corner of the poly pocket all down with obviously in paper and just gently pull it off and there we go there we go <laughs> there we go there's the image uh, and not a wrinkle not a pucker apart from me in sight and it can be your own image, whatever you want. Own image, yep. You can put any image, obviously, you know, and particularly if you're, if you're adept with Photoshop, then uh, you can really have some fun creating your own decoupage. Now, what we're going to do now is I've just got the same Mod Podge watered down. Just get a little bit on my brush, not too much. And then I'm just going to go over the top of that image just to make sure that it's not going to lift it's going to soak in because of course it was initially soaked purely in water and we've only been using watered down mod podge so just putting that extra little bit of mod podge on top ups the adhesive quality shall we say Can you imagine the trauma if you went to it and it all sprung up yeah that would be we've terrible we've done that haven't we in the past oh yeah we've done that in the past <laughs> we've we've decoupaged large areas Re retired for the evening with some f big piece of furniture come down and <laughs> you wish you hadn't have come down but you know it is only tissue at the end of the day it doesn't take a lot to remove it so what i've done is put a very thin layer of the water down much probably over the top and now i'll just put that to one side it'll dry it'll be perfectly flat and it'll end up looking somewhat like uh, the one that we did earlier. Uh, the Mod Podge, even though it's matte, does have a slightly shiny finish. Uh, so if we had... Uh, what, what tends to happen when you put it on coffee stain paper, the water and the Mod Podge just washes away some of the uh, coffee effect. So you can end up with a bit of a halo, which in normal circumstances would be fine. Um, but you can get round that by, just put my lid on my Mod Podge, uh, using some, uh, this is a Tim Holtz Distress Collage Medium. I've actually got, like it so much, we bought the larger bottle. You can probably read that slightly better. Uh, Tim Holtz Distress Collage Medium Vintage. Uh, and that's, it's like a Mod Podgy type stuff, but it's kind of a, vintagey colour sepia old photograph type colour uh, and that's what it looks like sort of a caramelly colour in this small bottle we've actually watered that down because it is quite thick and gloopy but what I'm going to use it for really we need it watered down slightly and what I'm going to do is take the same brush again 
uh, dry it off this time so there's not too much water around being damp helps I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that collage medium I they can see that color possibly not just a little bit on there what I'm going to do is go around the area just around the outside of the the bird where it's just washed out some of the color or if the uh, or if you'd left white around it and you just wanted to disguise it slightly and just go around feather it away you're probably not going to catch this much on camera um, but it's just adding a little bit of color back into that just I disguising the edges of the decoupage do things in two straighter lines because it just catches the eye and what that does is just add a little bit of color back in I'm not sure whether you'll be able to see that particularly but it just adds a little bit of color that just hides the edge I had a practice earlier on this uh, bird's nest which was exactly the same technique on the tissue paper um, but I left more white there's, there's actually an, an edge and you can even see it uh, maybe there's just just an edge right there, which is like where I've cut it out with more white on it. Um, and then what I've done is that is, is going to go around with the Tim Holtz Vintage Distress Decoupage Gel, and it just hides that away, blends it in. And there we go. That's it. That's pretty much decoupaging with the printer uh, as I say you can use an inkjet or a laser uh, find whichever method works for you I think the the tissue paper is uh, is very nice to use you get nice crisp images but of course, for those folks that don't have a printer and there are some you can still do your images manipulate them on Photoshop if you've got that put them on a stick and take them to a print shop couldn't you uh, well, they might not print on tissue. They might not print on tissue. Um, um, so yeah, my advice is to buy a printer. Yeah, well, <laughs> they're relatively inexpensive, aren't they? Uh, yeah, printers are inexpensive, particularly ink jets. Um, tens of pounds, you can get a. a but don't forget to your inkjet images overnight. Yeah, if you use an inkjet images, they will bleed. Um, I could try one, I suppose. Yeah, try one. Uh, let's use one. We'll put it onto white paper. Yeah, we'll do that under white paper. We'll use the one on the the single ply, the one ply that's got all the dimples in. It's kind of the lowest quality tissue uh, napkin that you can buy. And we'll have a go at seeing what that looks like uh we'll cut that out if uh made some scissors there we go just onto that back sheet. Uh, sheet. i could do it still needs to cut out it really doesn't it yeah yeah <laughs> yeah we'll just stick some glue on it well i could do it's a nice image that bird envelope yeah, it is a nice image. With the, the there is another one on uh, Graphics Fairy that's that's very similar to the, this one, the bird in the nest on the envelope. The, there is literally tens of thousands of images on there uh, that are all copyright free, uh, and you can literally spend forever. You could, of course, tear this out. Um, which is usually a good idea because then you don't get sharp edges that catch your eye. But just for this, I'll, I'll tear that edge and then we'll see where we're at. Obviously, this is a single ply one, so I didn't even have to uh, remove the back. Just tear some edges. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing there. I'm probably too far away. So when did you print that then? How, how long ago did you print that? Uh, this I printed yesterday um, ne nearly 24 hours ago um, uh, so it'd be quite dry i could print another one now no it's all right just 
but I'd have to leave you and you know <laughs> then the dance of seven veils would be coming out <laughs> I think not So there's the image on a single layer of the cheapest napkin you can buy. I don't know whether you can see the dimples on oh, the paper. Works well, we're about to find out, aren't we? Should I put it on the same bit of coffee stained yeah. or put it on white? No, put it on white. Put it on white. The carrier sheet. Yeah, I've got to find another one. for a slightly heavier weight of paper just to give me a chance uh, so we're going to put this on the poly pocket again I guess might work, might not might, work, might not, never done this before not even sure why I'm here really oh don't say that <laughs> right so I'm going to put that again put it face down, image down and we're going to wet it first. I've got a little spritzer actually. I might give it a little spritz first. I've used the spritzer because if the ink is going to run, obviously it's you know it's going to run more if I run the brush over it. Paper. Well, that's the issue, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, maybe I shouldn't have spritzed it because I should have been doing it from the middle, but. Yeah, because I doubt you can stretch that out, it'll tear. Adding. Give it a go. Give it a go. Donna says you give excellent instruction, Mr. F. Thank you. You're welcome. I think I'll probably mess this one up by spritzing it because, of course, I should have been. Uh... Hilda says thank you for your. All... You're here for all of us, Mr. F. Thanks ever so much for your input today. Yeah, I think I might have Should've to. Should have gone out on a high. Should have gone out on a high, indeed. <laughs> I think because I don't think that's going to stretch out. No. But you know what I'll do is I'll 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 get it flat as I can. We're going to have to live. We're going to have to embrace the wrinkles. Yeah, I think it was Deborah that said she embraced wrinkles. Indeed. So I'm just going to flatten it down onto the sheet as best as I can. Because if I try and move that now, it's just going to tear. So they are lesson learnt. Should have put water in the middle and gone outwards. As I was instructed to do. But no, you went but off no, piste. No, went off piste. But you know. you got to try. You have to try. I just thought maybe not touching it would be the way forward. But I think there's... You know, let me just do a little bit of paper there. Yeah, there's just a little bit of the ink coming out. Can you just see that on the corner? Uh, yeah. uh, anyway, so kind of mess this one up, but we'll we'll carry on marching forward, ever onwards to disaster. Need a bit bigger area than we did last time for this one. But again, we don't want it to be too wet. But we do want it to have a bit of grab so that it stays on the paper and doesn't come up with me Polly Pocket. Luckily, I have another copy of the image on the two-ply. Ooh, that's really gone weird. Is it? Yeah, it's really washed out. Uh. We have done decoupage with inkjets before, but that's... Uh, yeah, we usually we leave them overnight. Uh, maybe I haven't done it long oh, enough. No, I said you'd done that yesterday. I don't know yeah. why. Don't know why. No, I don't know why. Operator error. No, I don't think so. Kind of lost the, uh, the bird, <laughs> the envelope, <laughs> entirely. But, you know, we'll see. We're still getting a very nice uh, texture, if nothing else. 
it is coming off the poly pocket which is a bonus Lift in slightly there but it'll flop down over it. Yeah, well as you can see that kind of lost the image <laughs> Just uh, flatten that down a little. A bit there. I'll lift that up as you can see that the image is kind of well, kind of run. So that one wasn't so successful. Shall we try it with the two play? Or shall we quit while we're behind? Images than that from an inkjet. It must be that stupid tissue. It, it must be the cheap tissue. I'm going to blame the cheap tissue and, and try with the the two ply tissue. Whether well, I like... wrinkles are one thing, but losing your image that's that, that's no good. That's no good at all. But as I say, we have done that before, so it's definitely doable because we've done that. Maybe the, maybe the spritzer input too much. Well, I've done it in A3. Um, yeah, we did. Some massive A3 images. Uh, decoupaged onto the uh, front door of a cabinet in inkjet. And that worked a treat. So I think we can probably... I, I think it's those stupid cheap um, napkins. Yeah, you could be right. Avoid the cheap napkins. There's that one there. As you can see on the uh, the second layer, some of the ink has gone through. Right. But that's the nature of ink jets, because they're liquid ink as opposed to dry. Another advantage of the laser is that you can leave them for months and months and months, and it never dries up because it's a dry powder anyway. Ink jets, if you don't use them, excuse me, well I just uh, find a tissue. <laughs> There should be plenty. There we go. Yeah, the beauty of lasers is they never dry up. Ink jets, if you leave them for a, a few weeks or whatever, the, the nozzles can dry uh, and then really it's pretty much scrap. Uh, right, what we're going to do now, we're going to try and work out which side the image is on. That way. Try again this time using slightly less water from the middle. Yeah, is that the right side? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Maybe another way this, maybe we did it was just to, to put it directly on. Yeah. I think that's probably, we probably didn't use yeah. all this water to yeah. de, de, de wrinkle it. So it's probably, um, this yeah. method that's not working with an inkjet. Yeah, I think you're right there. I think uh, when we did the inkjet ones before, I think we de decoupage direct. Yeah. You know, put the Mod Podge onto the substrate and, and put the image directly on top. I think that's probably the way forward. Yeah, the good old fashioned way. The good old fashioned way. Works best. But for the the tissue, the like the tissue paper that you drop a gift up in, this is definitely a good technique. Yeah, definitely, definitely works well with the tissue paper. Uh, not so well with the napkins. No. I mean, the a laser printed napkin, of course, would have no problem with at all. That washing much ink out looks all right from here. Well, it's got very little, very little uh, water on there, oh. uh, so it's certainly not washing it out as much. But it is a bit wrinkly. A bit wrinkly. Uh, but you might be able to squash some of that with your acetate. Indeed. Indeed. I'll get another piece of paper. No expense spared. Put a little bit of mod down. The beauty of experimenting is, of course, you find out what does and doesn't work. And I think what we've decided is that uh, tissue paper 
and laser printed images work well with the wet transfer method. The inkjet you leave to dry and use the normal sort of dry application as it were. Put your Mod Podge down, your decoupage gel and then just lower the image on top trying to avoid any wrinkles because the water uh, is definitely making the, the ink run even having been dried for 24 hours. Uh, of course I've got similar images on tissue from the laser so maybe that will be the next little experiment because that again as we've got more of the image but it's hardly what you would call high resolution. <laughs> That's the other napkin, which you can see has got slightly better resolution, but it's still running somewhat. It's quite nice, that though. I quite like that. Yeah, I mean, if you want a sort of an impressionistic, yeah, I quite like you that, can actually. see the bird and the envelope. So there's no no mistakes, only. Oh, I like that. That's lovely. Only lucky accidents. So those cheap napkins, use them to wipe your nose. That's the best. Yeah. Yeah. Or anything else that needs wiping, but I'd stick with the nose because I yeah. wouldn't trust them for anything more. Yeah, okay. So, just the last third one then, we've got the same napkin as we've just done, but laser printed. So we'll now see if we can transfer that one. I might use the other bit of Poly Pocket because that one could do with a wipe. When you've used the Poly Pocket for a number of times, it can get a bit sticky because of the decoupage starts drying but you can wipe it off with a wet cloth or just get the other half of See, the... See that hasn't got as much colour on it to start with has it? Uh, it hasn't, that's probably a truer representation that colour of what the original image was. Because you can calibrate your printer can't you? Yeah. Colour calibration. Yeah. You can, you can colour calibrate your printer if you needed to but really it isn't worth the, the time unless you're doing Family portraits, you, know, it might be worth it. you don't want Auntie Doris to end up with a red face. I'm just saying. You're only saying that because you know my Auntie Doris always has a red face. <laughs> the old sop. <laughs> Auntie Doris on the sherry again. <laughs> Have I not got? No, I haven't got an Auntie Doris. No, I just made that up. Got an anti macassar. Yeah, you haven't actually. You haven't even got an anti macassar. No. Answers on a postcard as to what an anti macassar is. Right, so that's the laser printed one on the tissue. Well, now try that. On the two ply tissue. On the two ply, which is a good, good, good spot on the two ply. So I've actually got to take the back one off. And we'll try this one, see whether this one works with a water method or whether... You're taking the back layer off. Yep, taking the back layer off. Face, image face down on me Polly Pocket. Uh, water from the image, from the middle. I mean, of course, I'm not making it easy on myself using such a big image because, of course, the larger it is. The more opportunity. Oh, you like to live dangerously. I like you? to live on the edge. If you're not, <laughs> if you're not living on the edge, you're taking up too much room. That looks like it's not leaching. That's not leaching at all that I can see, um, because as we pointed out, it is the laser. Mm -hmm. You have to need a gentle touch here because, of course, we are talking about wet tissue, which has all the uh, strength of wet tissue. Of wet tissue. <laughs> yeah, Lynn, quite right. Chair back cover. Yay! 
You win today's curly whirly. <laughs> <coughs> it's a virtual one. <laughs> you don't want to make you fat. No. Just about to see, well, still a few wrinkles in there, but I think that's more my uh, delicacy of touch than uh, problems with the image or the technique. Flora likes it if, if your edge, your edge saying, I can't remember what it is now, but she likes it. Because living on the edge. If you're not living on the edge, you're taking up too much room. That's the one. It is. It's, it's very true. Yeah, after 60 years of living on the edge, I'm ready to sit down on the settee, Frank. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That's looking good. And even if you're living on the edge, don't forget your two metres social distancing. <laughs> yeah, I love this image too, Lynn. It's gorgeous. There we go. That's the laser printed one as you see there's no running there you'll probably see it that way around which is the any of that image the, the, the way that it will be going uh there are the odd wrinkle but that's as i say it, more time and a gentler touch you could probably achieve a better result but where are we i'm just about to put mod podge so we've wet the image Stretched it out as much as I dare. Uh, now I'm going to put some watered down Mod Podge onto the thing again, roughly about the same size as the uh, the image that we're transferring. And really, what this is is just to give the paper a little bit of grab. So when I place that image on top, it chooses to stay there rather than attached to the poly pocket. I mean, it's not particularly well attached because because it's only water, so on the poly pocket. So it hasn't got a great deal, but there is a bit of uh, suction. So let's just put a very thin layer on that. We'll transfer that over to there. You really could have great fun, couldn't you, creating your own decoupage? You, you could literally spend the rest of your life doing it. Mm. It's... it's the secret then is to find things that you actually need to decoupage onto. Yeah. Which of course is where the junk journal inside comes in. Yeah. Right, there we Try and ease out some of those wrinkly bits that we put in. Yeah, well, I mean, you can immediately see that that image is much clearer, crisper. Well, it's got a bird in it, for heaven's sake. <laughs> So I'd say that if you're going to use napkins, then... Yeah, Lynn's just said you could turn it into an envelope. It would look lovely. It would, you're dead wrong. It is. I, I could have decoupaged that directly onto a, yeah. a pre-made envelope. Yeah. And it, thinking, it would be job done. That'd be perfect, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. It's another graphics fairy image, so it's it's there if you... It is there. I think there's another one very similar. Uh, so when, as I say, I put a little bit of pressure on there. It just eases out any wrinkles, crinkles or whatever. Uh, and then I'm just going to attempt to ease that off slowly, 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 slowly. And it's gripping the paper well. It's not sticking to the poly pocket. If I'd have used the one that we'd already been using, it would probably be sticking to it because it goes sticky after a while. But there we go. That's that's, that's, that's that one. You can see, there's, there's there's the odd little wrinkle, but nothing major. It still retained its form and shape. Uh, again, just to finish it off, we'll just get some of the very runny Mod Podge, not too much, uh, and we'll just. Ease that down. 
Again, oh, so she knows what she's going to be doing for the rest of the afternoon. So do we, Maureen. <laughs> Practicing the dance of the seven veils, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, because she hasn't had an example, has she? Oh, no, that's true. Fortunately. Fortunately. <laughs> yeah. Oh, a bit of a blue blob. I'll ease that out. Yeah, you can't lose concentration with this. You've got to keep remembering it's wet tissue. It's wet tissue, wet tissue, wet tissue, wet tissue, wet tissue. Uh, and th this is really, literally just adding that little bit extra of adhesive uh, just to make sure that it stays down. Because if you bear in mind that all that really was on that tissue prior to this was, was water. Mm. It had no adhesion at all. We put a little bit down on the paper, but of course that would only be on the one side. So really what we're doing is sealing the top. Uh, says she wonders if you gave the inkjet a spray of fixed like hairspray, if it would set it first. Well, there you go, Donna. That's a nice project for you. That's a nice project. Uh, it, it may very well do, yes. I mean, there's, there's no reason that it's not worth a try. Um, what I would say, probably with the napkins, if you're printing on napkins, which if you've seen is perfectly possible to do, is just use the normal method. Put your Mod Podge or your Deco Podge gel down on your, on your surface and, and then dry apply the tissue to the top. It's slightly harder to get rid of wrinkles and whatever that way, but at least you won't lose the image. And because there's not so much water around, it should be fine. Mm. What I would do is, is put it down onto the decoupage gel, let it dry first, and then go over the top lightly with a, some sealant to either mod, mod Podge or even some of your air spray just to seal yeah. it. Try and avoid too much liquid, I think, is the secret, which is where we went wrong with those. Um, so yeah, basically we have there. Really nice. Can you hold it? Oh, yeah. Is the finished one? Um, again, I can't remember who was. I suggested putting that directly onto an envelope. That would Lynn. be fine. Lynn. You can see there is a line just down there. Actually, it's showing up Don't very it? markedly on the camera. Yeah, it's not quite so bad in in real life, but that, actually, that's the fold of the napkin when it was folded, not the issue with the application so you do you reckon ironing would get rid of that i think if you ironed your napkins before you started i think you would probably be fine mm. or spend a good amount of time flattening it out mm. um, which i didn't bother to do because you could could you put masking paper masking tape up the sides to hold it flat uh there's no reason you can't do that what i've found in the past though if you if you masking tape all four sides if it's not absolutely flat on the paper, mm. it can cause it to balloon mm. when it goes through uh, and the paper bends yeah. around. It, it tends to balloon out because it, it's yeah. got nowhere to go yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, you could masking tape. You can certainly try masking tape all the way around. But I found that if I do it top and bottom, it's less of an issue than if I do all four. Mm. Um can you ask people to subscribe, please? Uh, yeah, well, if you've enjoyed watching this, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> but if you have enjoyed watching this, bear in mind that uh, Fiona does lives every Saturday and Sunday and occasionally on a Wednesday. Uh, so if you could subscribe to the channel, that'd be marvellous. If you tick on the bell by the side, you'll get notifications of when there is a live or a new video. Otherwise, it won't interrupt you at all. You, you won't get spammed or sent lots of emails all you get is notifications when new lives are coming up or when a new video is uploaded so there we go i hope you've enjoyed it yeah possibly not as much as when uh, fiona's doing it with a yeah, nice calming great. voice that's great uh if there's any other things i can think of that uh, i can do with my big plodgy fingers then uh, I'll be happy to do some more. Sure, Marie, Hilda and Donna are all say thanks. You're welcome, Morning, ladies. Thanks. Thank you, ladies. You're most welcome. I've enjoyed it. I think. Deborah. Deborah. Everybody, yep. Everybody's enjoyed it. That's good. Uh, 
So yes, and obviously most of you know by now that uh, Fiona has a Facebook group called Junk Journal Group, uh, which is exclusively for junk journal related material. On there we started putting on some files uh, with free images of uh, posters, uh, advertising posters, um, transport posters, whatever posters, they're all on there. I'll upload some more as we go along and then when my Dropbox gets filled I'll start knocking them off but I'll give you notification to download them prior to that. Uh, at the moment there's some fashion ones on there and some transport uh, and I've got hundreds more when I get around to doing them. So thank you for joining us. We'll see you again soon. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow two o'clock UK time, uh, where Fiona will be carrying on with the how to make a basic you, you junk journal. Where's my junk journal? What's that? Uh, oh, there. Oh, no, on the other side. No. On the other side, if you can run a second, I shall have a look, see what we're doing. Yeah, down on the bottom there. there. Yeah. yeah. You can show them my birds on the music sheets. Uh, yeah. Here we go, just to give you a heads up of what we're about tomorrow. That's that image. I think it's turned out quite successfully with a laser printer. Much less so with the <laughs> inkjet. But we've decided now that there's a different method for putting the inkjet ones on. Um, yeah. But once you've got the image on the napkin, of course, you can do it however you would normally do it. Uh, these are the two signatures that Fiona's working on over the weekend lives. Um, as you know, we've all done the... seen us do the stenciling for the fronts. Uh, stenciling on the inside of the pages putting some little bits of lace trim on and on the music pages she's decoupaged one of the birds onto the music page if you open the other one <laughs> the other one the other book yeah the brown one Ooh, let me put that back to where it was there. Ah, there we go. the brown one uh, again on the on the music page in the other one she uses a slightly different image uh, with the two birds and the nest on top of the music, which I think is really effective. You can see the music through uh, the white that we were talking about. Um, you can see that that's virtually disappeared and it's gone transparent, so you can see the music through it. So that's that isn't a graphics fairy one, that one. That's a Tim Holtz collage paper. Oh, that's apparently that's Tim Holtz collage paper, not a graphics fairy image. So that's a pre printed Tim Holtz paper, comes on a long roll, and you cut bits out. But that's what a professional decoupage looks like. <laughs> when you've got a more delicacy I mean, of touch. People, people like Deborah could watercolour that on. But we're not all as clever as Deborah. So. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there's there's any number of ways of playing. These are just two two basic signatures uh, that Fiona will carry on with. Finish off, add in certain tucks and tags yeah, and labels and. As well, that yellow page. Yellow page, probably first, you're doing. First inside the brown book. First inside the brown book. Ah. The first page, yeah. That's the page that she'll be working on, not this one, but in the other signature with a similar thing she'll be doing tomorrow. Yeah. She's got a nice little tag there on a bulb clip and that just opens up that way and that way. And you've got some journaling space over the side and a little tag on the outside. So she'll be re recreating something like that in the other signature during tomorrow's live. Uh, once both signatures are finished, then we'll do the covers, the spine, and, and bind it like a proper little junk journal. So that's it, I think. Thank you for joining me. Um, Fiona will see you again tomorrow. You'll probably hear from me in the background. And thank you very much. Bye. Bye.